Using this um, given matrix here, we have a 3 by 5 matrix. Let's try to solve for the basis of the range of this and then the rank of the linear transformation defined by this matrix here. The process of solving for the basis would include the transformation of this matrix into its equivalent reduced row echelon form because the basis of uh, the range is equal to the column space of matrix A and the column space includes the uh, columns in our initial matrix that after coming up with a reduced row echelon form will contain a leading one. So here we are going to start by coming up with the reduced row echelon form of this given matrix here. So what we could do here is to come up with a leading one here first. So let's try to multiply negative to row one for all the entries in our row one. So we have here, that's positive one, negative three, negative two, negative one, negative four now, okay? This is two, three, five, zero, zero. This is still two, one, two, one, and zero. So for this to become a reduced row echelon form, what we need to do is to only make sure that for a column that contains leading one, all other entries would be zero. So we are going to use here negative 2 times row 1. So add it to row 2 for a new row 2 to make this 0. And that is the same process so that our row 3 first and then our row 3 will become 0 as well. So you have here this process. The first row is still 1, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and negative 4. Next, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 2, 0. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, plus 3, positive 9. Next, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, plus 5, so positive 9. Then, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, plus 0, positive 2. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8 plus 0, so you have positive 8. For the third row, negative 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus negative 2, 0. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive um, 6, you have plus 1, you have positive 7. Then, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 9, uh, sorry, positive 4 plus 2, you will have here positive 6. Negative 2 times negative 1 is negative two, uh, positive 2 plus 1, 3. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8 plus 0. Still have 8 here. Next is to make this leading 1 by multiplying 1 ninth to all the entries in our row 2. So you will have here 1, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 4. This is 0. This is 1. This is 1. This is 2 ninths. This is 8 ninths. So 0, 7, 6, 3, and 8. Next is to make this 0 here because we already have our leading 1. And of course, you're going to make this 0 later as we move backwards. So you have negative 7 of row 2 plus row 3 for a new row 3. So you have 1, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 4. 0, 1, 1. 2 ninths, 8 ninths. So this is 0. Negative 7 times 1 is negative 7 plus 7, 0. Negative 7 times 1 is negative 7 plus 6, negative 1. Negative 7 times this, that's negative 14 ninths. I hope that you could follow. Negative 14 ninths. In terms of ninths, this is 27. So negative 14, so you have 27, so you have 13 ninths. Negative 7 times this, that's negative 56 for our numerator over 9. This in terms of 9 is 72. Negative 56, 72. So you have um, negative, uh, I mean, yeah, positive 16, 9. So do it again. Negative 56, then you have 72. Yeah, that's correct. No need to worry about this because then again, later, you just need to make sure that or identify the columns with our uh, leading ones. But of course, you're going to uh, still operate them correctly as soon as we continue. Here, this will be multiplied by negative 1. So that this would be a leading 1. 1, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 4. 0, 1, 1, 2 ninths, 
8 ninths. Then you have your 0, 0, positive 1, negative 13 ninths, negative 16 ninths. We don't need to make the zeros because we already have a leading 1, nor we will not be making them uh, leading 1s as well. What we need to do next here is to make these other uh, entries with uh, on the columns with leading 1s be equal to 0. Specifically, let's start with this 2. So what we could do here is multiply negative 1 to row 3. We're going to work backwards plus row 2. Okay, For a new row 2. Similarly, negative, I mean positive 2. You'll be multiplying positive 2 to row 3. And then to make this 0, you add it to row 1 for a new row 1. Okay. Oh, I don't have much space. So yeah. I still have that. So we'll have here 1, negative 3. Ne uh, sorry. This will not. We will start with the bottom. Is 0, 0, 1. Negative 13 ninths. Negative 16 ninths. You have here 0, 1. So negative 3 times 1 is. I mean negative 1, rather, this is negative 1. Times 1 is negative 1 plus 1, 0. Negative of this is positive 13 ninths. Plus this, you'll have 15 ninths. Later. Uh, we will use our, what do you call this one, um, uh, the lowest terms later because uh, there might be some uh, strategy as well including the denominator of 9. So let's stick with that. Then negative of this is positive 16 ninths plus 8, 8. You will have 24 ninths. This is still uh, 1 here. So row 3, so this is still negative 3, right? Then 2 times 1 is 2 times this, that's 0. Okay. 2 times 39 is 26 over 9. Okay? Negative 26. Then you will have here another negative 9. So, um, again, 2 times uh, 13 is 26. Another 9 here is 35. Okay? Negative 35 over 9. Then, twice of this is negative 32 over 9. This is, in terms of 9, 36. Negative 32, negative 36. That's negative 68 over 9. Again, 32, 36, 68. That's correct. Finally, let's make this 0. Okay? By multiplying 3 to our row 2 plus row 1 for our new row 1. This is 0, 0, 1, negative 13 ninths, negative 16 ninths, 0, 1, 0, 15 ninths, 24 ninths, lowest term later, this is still 1. 3 times 1 is 3 plus that 0. This is still 0, right? 3 times um, 15 ninths is 45 ninths. Then you have negative minus 35, so this is 10 ninths. Thrice this is 72. Then you have 68, so you have minus, or sorry, positive 4 ninths. With this, this is ready the reduced row echelon form because the columns of our leading ones contain zeros. Again, the goal here, don't forget, the goal here is to pick those columns with leading ones or what we call as pivot columns. These first columns here are your pivot columns. Okay? This has no uh, leading ones, so we will not be including them. In short, if these first three columns are your pivot columns, Going back to your initial matrix, the first three columns of your initial matrix uh, comprises your column space or equal to the basis of the range. Hence, the basis for the range of T for this given matrix is the set containing the columns, the first column, negative 1, 2, and 2. Next, 3, 3, 1. And you will have the next... 2, 5, and then 2. Or, you could have it in this form. Negative 1, 2, 2. 3, 3, 1, 2, 5, and then 2. Okay. This is the basis for the range of this matrix A. Now, final, uh, unknown is the rank of T, which is equal to the dimension of the basis of your range. And our range here, or the basis for our range, contains three vectors, three non-zero vectors. Therefore, the rank of T is equal to 3. 
this is how we showed the basis for the range and the rank of this uh, matrix which are uh, non-conventional like your 2 by 2, 3 by 2, 2 by 3, and 3 by 3. We have this process here. Again, we started with our reduced row echelon form. And of course, again, as mentioned, this is just one of the possible uh, bases for the range because we use here the column space. If you're going to use the row space, you could also come up with uh, another basis. But uh, since we're doing column space since the previous videos, let's stick with this. We have one more example uh, later. Or a separate video for the last example for the the basis of the range and the rank of a linear transformation defined by a matrix. Thank you very much for watching.